the Afghanistan people are coming to the UK. So as you can see, we lost that tile. That's unfortunate. We lost another tile. We lost three tiles. So obviously, it doesn't look good right now, right? And Malta has just gotten nuked. So that's a very, very awesome nuke target right there. Very productive. That got a lot of work done right there. That nuking Malta, that was just, yep. And now we're going to naval invade Boston. Don't ask why Boston. Uh, just coincidental. Let's just say that. What's up, political gamers? Welcome back to another politicized gaming video. And today we're going to be playing Hearts of Iron 4 and we're going to be playing Afghanistan, the country. We're going to be spreading the jihad and the Islamic State across the world. So stay tuned. This will be a very interesting video and I hope you enjoy it. And let's go ahead and get right into it. All right. As you can see, we're in the pregame screen right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm a I'm kind of a new player to Hearts of Iron 4, if I'm being honest. So Afghanistan was a challenge for me. We're just going to go ahead and select Afghanistan and get right into it. Historical AI and Iron Man mode, by the way. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the national focus industrial effort. Next, we're going to go for production and construction. We're going to spam military factories on all of our states that general we're going to convert all of our military to the one that takes slower supply. And we're going to move our entire military to the Iran border. Next, we're going to buy some steel, of course, because we definitely need some steel to get our military factories working. As you can see, Italy is in the middle of taking Ethiopia right there on screen. Our focus is almost done. Next thing we're going to do is go for construction effort. Turkey remilitarizes the Turkish Straits. Like I said, historical focuses. Second. London Naval Treaty has been signed. Our general has fallen ill. That's very unfortunate for us. It's a good thing we're not at war. Construction effort done. Another construction effort two is what we're going to do now. We now have more civilian factories. Next, we're going to go for improved machine tools. And we're also going to take the fascist demagogue. We're going to be teaming up with Germany this game, as you can see. I had the plan to back to get Russia from the back when they were at war with Germany. As you can see, Italy just took Ethiopia right there. Construction one done. Very nice. Now we're going to go for construction two. We're actually going to change that to electronic mechanical engineering because of that research power, which is what we need. Next is going to be an infrastructure effort. And now we're going to go for dispersed inventory industry. That is the best. That is one of the best. That's the best thing to do, I think, is it prevents your factories from getting bombed. You can see we've also taken improved worker conditions. Construction effort three has finished. We're going to go for that research slot now. And we're training our military. Research is done. We're going to now focus on building our armament industry, okay, military factories. We're also researching artillery right now, which will be very useful when we're taking Iran. Armament efforts done. We're going to go for armament effort two now. You see, you see, we're still continuing that it's artillery research. About to max out our industry national focuses. We're also going to take superior firepower doctrine. And we're going to hold the national reform because we are now fascist. We have enough fascist support to go fascist. And we are now the new Afghan empire. So as you can see, we're researching military tech now. Going for, about to go for Iran. Justifying a war on Iran right now. Researching more military tech. And we have just went to war industry. Which gives us a nice boost to our civilian factories. Knowing that we don't really have any. And now we're going to train some military. Not too much though. We don't want to run out of supplies or manpower. While we're in the middle of this war, going down the mil going down the fascist path, of course, we do get more manpower that way. As you can see, we have 13 units. We have a very large military in comparison to Iran. Now we're going to declare on Iran our war goal, goal is done. As you can see, we are losing a battle up in the north right there. I do do the defensive. I'm going to be honest, I don't know what's that, what that's called, but I did do that defensive thing right there that gives your troops a defense bonus. 
So as you can see, we lost that tile. That's unfortunate. We lost another tile. We lost three tiles. So obviously it doesn't look good right now, right? Going back to that industry research. We do have a very nice military though. Military youth has finished. So we should have no problem with manpower. We're going to go for paramilitary. Italy has sent us some gun support. So that's beautiful right there. That is awesome. As you can see, we almost have a full general, almost 24 units. We do have a bigger military than Iran right now, I'm pretty sure. Next thing, we also got to get our war support up because as you can see, we are below 50% and that can give you negative events. You can see we're still struggling with Iran. This is mountainous terrain. It is very hard to move through. So I've decided to start building infrastructure on the tile. And hopefully that will give me some more. Hopefully that will give me some more supply in the region. So now we're starting to take some tiles back. Almost back to our pre-war borders. We still have that tile up in the north right there, which is kind of annoying. Molotov ribbon drop fact. As you can see, it is 1939. But that is fine. So it is a bit late in the game. Japan is taking China right now, as you can see. Qingxi just collapsed. Now we're going for the doctrines as well. So this is when we really start t picking up the pace in the Iran war. We really start beating them down. We, we have no manpower problems. We have no infantry problems. So we should not be easily able to just walk through them. Doctrine effort two, as you can see right there. We are rushing down that superior firepower path. As they do give infantry more tech boosts. And if I'm being honest with you guys, I have no idea how tanks work in this game. So I just use infantry. Well, let me rephrase that. I do not know how to make a good tank division. Plus it's Afghanistan. So I think putting most of your industry on tanks and mountainous terrain is kind of not right, right? Our military is ramping up. We have a full stack general now. We're working on our second. That's definitely what we like to see. We, are, we have just advanced a single one tile on the entire Iranian front line. So I'd say we are making very good progress. I know that we have a bigger military than Iran. So all we have to do is just extend the front line and make them make them very thin. And then it would just we would just walk through them because we have more units. We have been losing some land in the south right there. As you can see, our units are attritioning like... Like, they're attritioning so bad. This terrain is absolutely horrible. And I don't have the civilian industry to make a supply hub either. Plus, I was kind of worried because knowing my luck, once I got that supply hub built, the AI would just instantly rush it and then take it and then the game would be over because now they have a supply hub. So as you can see, we're going to try to make some moves in the south here because they do not have a very nice, they do not have a lot of units in the area. gonna see what we can do but they end up shutting us down that did not work out you can see our loss ratio is one to three right now we got 58k they got 148k technically not exactly one to three but it's basically that As you can see our military tech right there was absolutely crazy now going for I don't know what to research right there, so I don't know what I was doing. I just left it, I guess. I don't know. What we end up doing is actually going for airplanes. Because I had the I had the idea there's no way Germany's gonna land in the UK or in the United States. So we might as well start developing those naval bombers right now before we get into the American war so we can help out. Germany and defeat the allies. I noticed we were an equipment deficit right there. So we stopped making units. We are almost done with the superior firepower doctrine. As you can see, Iran going for an encirclement right there. Too bad. Our Afghan military is just superb. Shut that down instantly. And you see, it's kind of been a stalemate until this happens. They leave their border open, which is absolutely Definitely an AI mistake, right? 
they left their border open and I'm just like, we won it instantly because that gives us the chance to extend the front line, which is all we need. We have a, we have much more units than them. We can easily just break through their front lines with that. That was very nice. The game kind of bailed me out right there, if I'm not going to lie. We was going to win eventually, though. I mean, come on. At the rate they at the rate they were losing soldiers versus us, they was just gonna their industry wouldn't have been able to keep up. As you can see, we're going straight for Tehran. We get that. I gotta get that supply up there, right? We need we need need some sort of supply, you know what I'm saying? So we just took the Iran capital. And now we're gonna cut up through the north here. As you can see, they have 216k losses. Pretty decent. It's 1940. So this front line is now very long. And we can definitely just walk through them now. So As you can see, we're, we're actually researching close air support. I know I definitely will need that for later as well. Researching the artillery. We're actually going to go for infantry equipment too right there with our times X2 research speed. And now I'm speeding the game up right here because this is just me micromanaging all of these units to capture all of the victory points so we can quickly annex Iran. Because we got to finish this war. I'm pretty sure the German-Soviet war has just started so we got to get some of the Soviet Union before it's way too late for any type of war participation for us at all. We also have not joined the Axis yet because I don't know, but I'm pretty sure if you join the Axis, the allies will actually end up guaranteeing the people you're at war with, I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. And I had plans to declare war on Iraq, so I didn't want the British AI thinking that I was on Germany's side. So we waited to join the Axis until much later, until after the Iraq war. Close air support one, very nice. I'm gonna go for cast two. And as you can see, Iran has capitulated. We're just gonna take all of their stuff. We need the factories and the manpower for the upcoming Allied war. I was definitely not worried about Bex like flanking the Soviet Union. I know we would have steamrolled them because they will have their entire army on the German front. So that won't be an issue for us. What I'm worried about is definitely the future allies because it is 1941 and we have just finished our first big war. So we are kind of behind. As you can see, we are getting an intelligence agency. We got to get that spy to reduce the unrest in the region. And as you can see, Operation Barbarossa has just started. We are also just to find war on Iraq. Japan has declared war on British Malaya and the United States has just joined the UK early. Uh, that was very early. So that's even more concerning. We're also time lapsing again. Just because this Iraq war shouldn't take long at all. Just let the AI do the work. We have an absolutely insane trained army from the Iran war. We are on air production. Do not ask why we're on air production. We are not producing any planes. That was a mistake I made. We should have been on the unrest one. But I just made a... So we're actually going to justify on the Soviet Union ourselves. The Soviet Union is influencing our politics. That's very interesting. Which means we're now having communist support right now. So right now we're about to get a revenge for the afghan soviet war that hasn't even happened yet but we're time travelers so yeah and let's go ahead and start just let the ai do the work there's no way the soviet army can contest my army because mine has been trained in this terrain for five years the soviet union has done no fighting in the region fall of leningrad very nice as you can see, Germany is about to take Moscow right there, getting very close. They are making some gains in Iran, but that's kind of, that's just, that's fine. We're going to shut it down anyway. 
the fall of Moscow, the fall of Sevastopol. So all of, they're they're losing all of their major cities to Germany. Plus, they have my flank to worry about. So we will definitely take the Soviet Union, no issue whatsoever. As you can see, we also have 80% war support. Very nice. The communists are coming into our government. Very unfortunate. They're influencing our politics. The fall of Stalingrad has just happened, so capitulation of the Soviet Union is any time now. We're just going to take the rest of these victory points, and that should end them off. We do not get a lot of war participation in this war, if I'm being honest. And it should be any time now. As you can see, we've just connected our borders with the German Empire, which means they can now move their army into our territory. So that's beautiful. The Soviet War has just ended very nice. We got enough war participation. I plan on taking all of the oil and the resources because Germany is starved of oil and I need the factories. So we're going to milk the German civilian factories by getting them to trade oil with us, right? And as you can see, that's the peace conference right there. So we got a decent amount of stuff. Very nice. We did create some atrocious looking borders. Looks like the Russian Empire actually had a civil war during that peace conference. I don't know what happened there. The Russian Empire is alive and it's fighting Germany for some reason. So that's a little bit weird. We're getting ready to help Germany out with the Allied invasion. I just wondered if I was just debating if we were ready or not because we do have the British Raj next to us. Plus America has joined the war. So... We have an American military to worry about, but I said, why not? So we're going to go ahead and move, start moving our troops over to their borders and we're going to help, help our allies out. As you can see, we have just declared war on the British Raj. So I do believe we can take them easily. Our army is superior trained. We have a better, we have better generals. We have just a better army, right? Plus, they can't counter the force of the Jihad, so that's what's up. Obviously, attrition is a massive problem, yet again. But it looks like we we do have a bottleneck right here, so I'm going to take advantage of it, knowing that it is very risky. Taking out their railways, as you can see on the map, just so I can give them some bad attritioning as well. As you can see, we got a one unit encirclement right there. Very nice. like to see it. We also have a 17 unit encirclement on Kuzdar. So that's also very nice. Very major encirclement. Just wipe that off. As you can see, we're running a 12 width right now with a lot of support companies. And it seems to be working with us right now. We actually end up using that 12 with the entire game, even to conquer somebody in the future who I will not spoiler yet. Now we're going for Delhi. Delhi. Once again, it's a supply hub. We need the supplies. As you can see, Japan has landed in India. So that gives us another front, which means India is basically done for because... If I can't advance, that means there's no border. That, that means there's no infantry on the Japanese front line, which means Japan will quickly be able to get India. As you can see, India's India's done. Turkey as well. Turkey has joined the war. They're done as well. And India has basically capitulated. So we've actually justified on Saudi Arabia in the meantime. And now we are going to declare war on them. We are reuniting the Middle East, quote unquote. And as you can see, we're actually going to make a garrison division right now. Because we do need, we do, we are going to need some of our unrest to get down. So make a quick garrison division right there. Six infantry, one military police. As you can see, we are, we have finally switched to resistance impression. So... That's very nice. As you can see, it's 1946. Guys, that's insane. We are in 3x speed right now. 
And for some reason, the Dominion of India just completely separates from Japan. I don't know what the heck happened there. I don't know what that was, but that we just lost all of our Indian land to Germany. That is very annoying. Th those Indian lands was giving us manpower, which we was in desperate need of. And for some reason, I have no idea. Game must have lagged. But as you can see, we're actually going for re we're actually going for naval tech right now. So if you can guess what we're about to do, you got it. And Italy has actually ended up winning their civil war. Benito Mussolini is back in power. And we're buying steel. We have a massive steel problem right now. We like we need more steel. It is definitely an issue. We have a lot of research slots now, so that's very nice. We're just spamming out this naval tech. The our first naval tech bomber is done, and Malta has just gotten nuked. So that's a very very awesome nuke target right there. Very productive. That got a lot of work done right there. That nuking Malta, that was just, yep. Yeah, very strategically important decision to nuke Malta. As you can see, we're actually getting ready to launch a military. We're actually getting ready to launch a naval invasion. Can you guess where? It's going to be of Gibraltar. That's right. Now, I was, I, I was, I'm actually having a brain fart right here. We're actually just going to launch our entire units. I don't know what I was trying to do because Gibraltar is only one single tile. Plus, we have max naval transport tech, so why not just launch the entire army? There's our naval bombers. We're going to move them to the Western Mediterranean, and we're going to launch now. Now, I forgot to put my navy on. I forgot to put my navy on naval invasion support, I'm pretty sure it is. But that's fine. I'm pretty sure... We do end up having a good fight in Gibraltar. I do end up putting my general on the force attack. Just so we take this no issue whatsoever. And I realize it right here. So boom, we're going to put it on naval invasion support right now. Very nice. So as you can see, we just took Gibraltar as Afghanistan. I would say that's a pretty good accomplishment, right? We literally have like 12 ships. Very nice. As you can see, we, we're making a 2000 production destroyer. Like I said, I don't know if this is good or not. I don't know if we should be spamming terrible tech ones or what. Like I said, I'm kind of I'm kind of new to this game. We're going to weaken their Navy in the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay. I'm pronouncing that right. See if we can do a naval invasion straight on the English homeland. But as you can see, I realize there's no way we're gonna get naval dominance in that region, even if we have two thousand. Even if we have, even if we have so many naval bombers, so we scrap that, and we actually end up landing. We actually end up going for Ireland. We actually end up going for Northern Ireland. And now we're going to do that naval invasion. As you can see, I did remember to put it on naval invasion support net right there. Very nice. We should take Northern Ireland, no problem. And that will give us a base literally right next to the UK. Marines too. Very nice. He's preparing for our, our our American naval invasion. And let's go ahead and take them. Yeah, absolutely no issues whatsoever. And now we basically have a very good base to land in the UK, which we do end up attempting to do. As you can see, we're going to land in Liverpool. The Afghanistan people are coming to the UK. So we have just launched and we are now landing. In a, we got to hurry up and take Liverpool because it is a port and we do need that for supplies. Let's go ahead and begin micromanaging the rest of the front. And Liverpool has just fallen. Very nice. 
After that, the entire German and Italian military just move in here and it's basically GG's. Because we all know the German military just beats the UK military every single day of the week. Now all we, all we need to do is just attack them. So we're going to time lapse it again. And there you go. The UK is done for. And our last target is the United States of America. So actually, in this game, something weird happened. And the Japanese Navy actually ended up just decimating the American Navy. So that actually does end up helping us. I don't know how that happened. But for some reason, the, the Japanese was able to get up to like 700 ships at this current moment in time. And the Americans had like 200. So the American Navy shouldn't be a problem with our naval, naval bombers and our very weak destroyer Navy. So we're going to go ahead and quickly naval invade Iceland. And then we're going to go for Denmark after that. And then after that, we're going to land in the United States of America. Gonna actually land on both tiles right here. Gonna land on the victory point, point and the port. We're actually researching trains right now. Don't ask why, because we never end up producing them. So, yeah, we have two hundred and one factories. The year is nineteen fifty. So we have been going on for a long time, and now we're gonna attempt to land a new Foundland. Now. We have some issues, and that is our naval bombers. For some reason, they do not deploy. When I put them in the, when I put them in that sea, they never deployed. So, which this is why I just skipped ahead some time. As you can see, the date jump in the top right, we jumped two years. That's right. It took us two years to get that naval landing off, and now we're going to naval invade Boston. Don't ask why Boston. Uh, just coincidental. Let's just say that. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. As you can see, we have just landed in America. Very nice. That's what we'd like to see. Going to put our general on force attack as well. We definitely need to take Boston. And it's basically GG for America. The German military can start moving in. This is very sped up right now. 10x speed. As you can see that is our that was our division composition. So that's probably why we're having trouble moving through America, because I'm sure they actually probably have a better looking division template. Ours is 12 with, so As you can see we are having some problems continuing Newfoundland, but that's fine. The Italian Empire actually ends up landing in Washington, DC. So well, they end up landing right next to it. Which that creates another front for the Americas. Very nice. As you can see, we are having some intensive issues on moving through New England right here. We are not able to advance like at all. And another thing, as you can see, Vichy France. Vichy France has just landed in Georgia. So it's basically GG. It's basically just waiting game right now because we're definitely going to win. We are definitely going to win this no matter what. And if you see right there, for some reason, the German Empire has just taken New England from us. I don't know why that just happened, but they just did. So that's sad news for us. They, t they took India from us and they took New England from us. Very sad. I'm very sad. They would have never landed in the United States without us. Like, come on, give us some land, Germany. As you can see, steamroll. The United States capitulated, and Canada is the last major power. Canada is a major power, I know, right? As you can see, the war is about to end. Very nice. The war has just ended. Just took Wells right there. Don't ask why. And... That's it. Those are the rankings. I'm not going to show the peace deal. It's pretty long. But you guys will be able to see what I took. Our rankings were not that high up. I don't really know about that. 
our puppet though had rank three. So this is what we took. We took Texas. We took the oil fields. We got to be very rich in oil to fit the role play, right? That's all of our land. Very cursed borders, I will say. And that's it for the t and that's it for the video. 1954, Axis wins. Afghanistan beats the Allies, along with the help of other people, right? So here's my logistics right there. There is my production. If anybody likes to see this, we have 145 factories. And maybe if this video does good, we'll do a continuation video where we actually end up taking the axis. That will be in a part two. Because this video is already long as is. So anyways, thank you for watching me spread the Islamic cause across the world. And if you, I hope you enjoyed it. And if it's daytime for you, I hope you have a wonderful day. If it's nighttime for you, I hope you have a good night's rest. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Thank you for watching.